Welcome to episode 130 of the Postmodern Molly Polymass Podcast. I'm Chris. How y'all doing? Uh, Lyman is going to be here for a short bit, I think. He had a bit of an accent. I'll let him explain that. But I do have a guest this week. But first of all, I wanted to uh, tell y'all, I found out today that I am actually eligible to get the fancy vaccine. So I'm fat. And I have high blood pressure, so apparently that's considered enough. Uh, I had some worries that I've, I would, I don't know, I had some sort of guilt because other people have uh, haven't gotten it yet. That should really, and I, I have the opportunity to, but I think I'm gonna go ahead and get it anyway. Uh, you know, just to be safe, I guess. I don't really go anywhere. I'm trying to get my mom to go. I bugging the show at her. She's like 66. So she's going to have to take her happy ass down there. Anyway, um, let me go ahead and introduce my guest. Uh, I've known him. I haven't spoken to him in years. I don't even know how long it's been. A couple years, but uh, we've interacted before um, when he was on this old podcast. Uh, he's also known by the nom de guerre of Buddy the Lumberjack. Welcome, my friend and yours. The Canadian muscle man, Keith Spittleman. How you doing, Keith? I got my thinking toque on, like a in true Canadian fashion. <laughs> and this joke did not go over half as well as I'd hoped because uh, I didn't realize how close my camera was to me. And well, now that's ruined. So that's. And it's called a, I, a toque. Is that toque. T o q u e. Seems like it should be pronounced toque. <laughs> Well, uh, I didn't. I didn't write the the language. It's just you know what's there. But uh, I'm doing well, thank you. And yeah, you're right. It has been. It's been years. I was I was doing the old um, not another atheist podcast way back when. Yeah, <laughs> I guess that would have been the last time we talked. Yeah, uh, it's a lifetime ago. It feels. And uh, for the viewers at home, please ignore my cat in the background. He's finally getting a reprieve. Do not. From the kitten. Do not ignore the cat in the background, sir. Don't you dare <laughs> insult felines on my show, sir. Uh, I have a just cat exploring. here, and I have a cat up there in the painting you can't picture. Uh, oh, yeah, that's cute. Very nice. So, <laughs> Gotta um, love that. Yeah, so, Keith, buddy the lumberjack. <laughs> how you been, man? Just give me an over. Just give me a kind of how you doing? What's been going on? <laughs> Well, I guess, I guess uh, since the last time we spoke, I have, uh, well, I got married. Um, my did that uh, two and a bit years ago now, um, which is mind blowing to realize that somebody has not only been with me as long as my wife has, but she also agreed to let it become legally difficult to separate from me. Uh, so I, I think, uh, I think she lost out on that deal, but I'm not going to tell her that, and she she won't listen to this, so it's it's fine. I can get away with saying things like that now. So, um, no, so I got we got married. Um, we <laughs> adopted two cats since then, because the I guess the last time we talked, I only had my old one, and she's 15, 16 now, and so cranky as hell, and hates the fact that there are two that are under three, and because they have energy and drive her nuts. Yeah. But, uh. I've yeah I changed a few jobs and that's uh that's pretty much that my old show that we mentioned uh no longer is in, in circulation um Jen and I decided to put that one to bed and uh she's off working on her projects uh Atheist Wind Down I think is what it's called and uh I was picked up by the gentleman over at Cellador Skeptics that the other two Chris's that I know, and they it started off with um, Hannah being taking some time off because he was moving, and uh, that, that's that's kind of time consuming. And he has two little ones, so he took a few months off. And in the interim, uh, Tanner asked if I'd be interested in coming on doing you know like Canadian perspectives and stories and shit like that. Um, they had another gentleman, uh, jo uh, Boyce of the Trickle Up, I believe is the. Uh, the group that he's with now uh also helping out and once hannah came back they asked if i wanted to stick around I, so i do uh the odd canadian segment i think one of the f more fun ones that i did was i uh i did questions for a canadian 
and it was it was because Tanner is not a big you know patriot. He's a he's a filthy commie, and decided that he didn't want to celebrate the Fourth of July by talking about America. He wanted to talk about Canada, um, and it's it's been an interesting ride because I uh, you know as I've gone through skepticism. It and my atheism and all of that. I've I've spent time uh, reflecting on how little I actually know, and it's it's both terrifying and exciting because on the one hand I go, hey, look at all these things that I get to learn, and then on the other hand it's like, oh my god, there are so many things that I don't know, and there's nothing more intimidating to somebody with ADD than things that they don't know because that's so many different tabs open on their Google browser at any given time, and. Uh, but I've, I've had a had a really good time doing that. And I, I enjoy uh, the fact that I get to go through and learn about Canada and uh, dispel some of the myths. You know, we're not quite as squeaky clean as we and everybody else thinks we are. Uh, we're not always all that nice. We actually had uh, Corey Johnston on. He did an episode and he'll be coming back later on to do some more commie speak. Because, you know, when you are in Mother Russia, is that you do, yes? <clears throat> yeah, I've had a... The other Canadian, uh, the other white <laughs> mean, uh, <laughs> the other redneck Canadian, um, he, he's alone. He's more, he's way more though. His accent is, oh, wow. It's, he's got a thick accent. It's kind of funny though. Uh, is that Corey? Yeah. Corey. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. I, I had, he's just I, I think funny. That's just the way he talks. <laughs> no, no, I know. It's just funny. It's just. You're like, you're like a little more, a little more, you're in like uh, Alberta and he's in like Saskatchewan. And I'm like, what? Is that even a place? <laughs> Believe it or not. Yes. Uh, and, and there, it, it actually uh, is one of my favorite, favorite jokes from Deadpool is where he said something about Regina rhyming with fun. Yeah. And Regina is the capital of Saskatchewan. <laughs> There's actually a place called Saskatoon. Uh, that in, I, yeah. I know that. Yeah. Uh, I spent a year there one weekend. What? You spent a year there one weekend? <laughs> That's how long it felt. No. Um, <laughs> no, I, I was I was chasing a girl out there. It did, obviously, it didn't pan out because that's not my wife. But, you know, yeah, whatever. But, uh, yeah, Saskatchewan, they, they, there's a running joke, and I, I kind of stopped telling it for a while because I was like, well, you know, I don't, I'm trying to move away from the whole populism and I don't like you because you're from this place thing. So the whole Calgary Edmonton rivalry doesn't really do as much for me. And I try not to uh, stoke those flames, but uh, I was, I was driving through Saskatchewan. I'm like, Oh my God, it actually is as flat as the jokes make it sound because I'm pretty sure I've seen that dog three times in the last two days. And it's, it's just getting further and further away. <laughs> The joke is that you know you can watch your dog run away for three days in Saskatchewan. I guess okay. that, I guess okay. telling that first would have helped uh, land my punchline. I just worked all day and uh, spent all afternoon training people on how to talk to customers without risking them going off the rails. God, uh, yeah. I think shit. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, I'm a lot better at it than I thought, and so I get to train people and help coach them. See, you in, gotta be careful. To, Right, you're too you're too competent. If you're too competent, they want you to do more work. Right, that's what ends up happening. Yeah, the problem is, is that they also keep rewarding me. Like I got promotion, a raise, oh, a, we'll see. Like a bonus, you actually and I'm got just a promotion. like, yeah. the the problem is, is that I can see the upper tier of how far I can go on my own uh, doing that. So that's kind of a well, we're gonna make it to this point. We're gonna do what we can because I believe in being the best that you can for the sake of being the best, not for the sake of making somebody else money. All right. Well, I'm, you know, I'm glad you have a, a road in front of you. Mm -hmm. A lot of people are kind of stuck on the rung they're at right now, especially considering if you even have a job, considering what's going on right mm -hmm. now. Yeah. Well, it's my, I shifted from um, fitness out to uh, now I work on in online uh, or e um, basically e-commerce is what I'm doing now. Um, so my company actually, uh, we've doubled in size in the last year because of how busy we've been because of, with everything going online. Uh, right. So, and I mean, not just like online casinos because with physical casinos closed, people need to get that fixed somewhere. But, uh, yeah, it's, so we've, we've been really busy. We've hired on a ton of new people, uh, even created new positions, 
just to handle the the rampant growth and i mean some of the growing pains we've had were a bit bit miserable but we've managed to get through and you know my team is still we're fortunately able to work from home which has been great yeah uh, that's i do that that's Although for me, I mean, even to me, who's an introvert, man, even I got to get out sometimes. This shit's, oh, yeah. you know. So enough about me. What about you? How have you been? Um, so uh, this podcast has, uh, like I said, I got Lyman on, and it's been going about, I don't know, about a year, maybe. It's been on and off. You know, I get in the mood sometimes, and I've been... <laughs> I've been going on now for a uh, back on for a couple months and three months. So, um, I try to bring Lyman on to get pump a little blood, you know, a little new blood into the, oh, yeah. uh, to the old system. But, uh, you know, the, I'm doing all right. Just you know, like I said, working at home, uh, sitting my fat ass around, <laughs> uh, smoking some, uh, near weed and drinking my fancy beer. Um, Ooh. nothing too exciting going on here. Wait, really. What the hell's near weed? Is that like that? It's, is, is... uh, it's, well, it's not CBD quite. It's uh Delta eight, which is like, it's, it's like not as strong as regular weed, but mm, okay. it, it, what it can give you, it's got the psych psychoactive compound. And if you're like me and I don't have much of a tolerance, then it works for me. I mean, if okay. I get real weed, I'm, fuck off. <laughs> you know, but this is it kind of sneaks under the farm bill somehow it got huh. snuck under so um well, can't go wrong with that i, I guess uh, not everybody is as fortunate as you know us to have a, a leader who as soon as he yeah, could was fucking... able to able to make it legal yeah two days before my wedding Ooh, that's fancy yeah it's it's well the states increasingly states are doing i mean fucking mississippi I mean, come on. The closest to me is probably, well, that's medicinal. The closest recreational is two and a half hours. If I were to sneak on over to Illinois. But, mm. of course, the cross state lines are going to be watching your ass, of course. Mm. Um. So, yeah, that's what's been going on in my world. Um. So, Keith, uh, what is this? What did you pay these guys to have them come on their show? I mean, <laughs> I... I think they were uh, they needed somebody else on there so they could kind of you know not always be uh, back and forth and actually get a third voice going. No, um, they've had a really yeah. good thing going on for a long time. Like they've, it, it's kind of impressive how long they've been going. I think I started, you know, they hadn't quite hit the two hundred, and now we're you know pushing two hundred and sixty episodes. Um, Damn, one, I know it's. It, it, I never realized, and of course, it's a weekly show. I'm used to doing it every other week to, you know, kind of whenever the hell we feel like it or whenever things get outrageous enough. And uh, so it's it's been a big adjustment for me because, I'm again, I'm not really used to that kind of a consistent schedule. So there there have been times where I just, I, it comes around to Mondays and we, we're getting ready to put out the episode and I'm just like, oh, God, I have to be smart for two hours now. Crap. <laughs> Thankfully, I don't actually have to be very smart most of the time because that's that's Hannah. That guy just the, the guy is brilliant, and it's it's amazing the things that he knows and can just pull out of his head. Sometimes I'm just I just sit there and I just listen in awe. And then Tanner, he's he's very well. He's there. <laughs> Tanner's a good, Tanner's a good guy. He's got a great big heart, and he's he's wicked smart. Maybe not as good with the science, but uh, as far as you know, like policy uh, and things like that, he kicks a lot of ass. So it's been a lot of it's been really interesting to kind of see the the two different people working together and see how they kind of put things together, and you know, um, just as. Uh, an outsider's perspective, I guess. Cause I, I mean, as much as I love working with them, I still kind of feel a little on the outside, but that's also because, you know, they're both Americans. They've been friends for years and I'm a Canadian who doesn't really go places and talk to many people. Cause one COVID two, I don't know if you've met people, but they can be kind of awful. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I mean, like you, I live in the conservative part of uh, my country. It's fun, man. That's real fun. Mm. I love it. Yeah, it's great stuff. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, I've uh, I haven't talked to them. Let's see, they were on my show. Good God, 
That was like three, four years ago. It's been a long time. I had them on. No, I take that back because I had them on when I started the, this new podcast a couple of years ago. We talked about the war on drugs, I think, or something. <clears throat> yes. And yeah, yeah uh, Tanner is, he's got his, his beard game is on point, I guess. Oh, oh, yeah. Um, you should, really you should see it these days. It's like right down here. Yeah, I'm impressed. He's doing well with the beard because I watched uh, one of y'all's episodes and I was like, damn, that motherfucker ain't joking around. Oh, hell no. <laughs> and then, of course, there's me where if I don't shave for, you know, two weeks, I'm not allowed within 300 yards of an elementary school. Oh, oh, it's it's bad. I and according to my old man, he he, uh, he goes, yeah, you've, you've unfortunately got my facial hair patterns. And he was saying that he didn't really wasn't really able to grow a beard until he was like 35. And I'm sitting there. I'm like, OK, but I could grow. I grow, you know. I grow hair on my ass. I grow hair on my legs, on my chest, whatever. In a week, I could have a rug on my face. Eh, 12. I mean, don't get me wrong. The baby face look help, helps me not quite feel so old and helps me get ID'd, you know, because I shave. And then if I go to like a dispensary or a liquor store, I almost always get ID'd. And I'm like, okay, I can deal with this. I can deal with this. But uh, on the other hand, it's also like, you know, I'm curious how well it would go, but nope, just doesn't grow thick enough and unfortunately i've got really light or fairly light hair so uh yeah no i'm just uh beardly challenged well you gotta really do it right you gotta be dedicated to the beard man you gotta push through it man the good and the bad ups and the downs you gotta keep <laughs> doing it man unfortunately keep... my my wife would not tolerate that i she would need to go away for a couple of months for me to grow Sometimes sacrifices are important or uh, no. <laughs> you know. some things are just important more important Sorry, uh, no no I, I respect it i don't uh, i don't think that's a sacrifice i'm, I'm willing to make so well, obviously i'm not uh, i've made sacrifices because there's nobody here so obviously you know oh <laughs> to, to you, you're, you get to do it for you i have to think about somebody else when it comes to decisions like that all right i know I, I would I would never really get you know like because for me I would be like I want your you to like you know do the the, the chin scratches or whatever because I've got the hair and I want you to give that and she'd be like mm, nope nope no nope, no touching for you and it's like oh Boo. Right? Um, <laughs> so what do y'all uh, just give me kind of a kind of a rundown what do y'all mm -hmm. do on the, what the show's kind of about and what some of the topics y'all discussed. Well, Settler Door Skeptics, um, no, it is focused on a lot of topics that you see in skepticism. Um, so critical thinking is a huge thing that we deal with um, just because of everything going on with Trump and the fact that modern conservatism has shifted to this trollish uh, everything. Basically, we've spent a lot more time focusing on uh, politics and, you know, changes. And then, of course, with the Biden administration, we've we've tried to touch on, you know, how we're going to or how how we or well i guess maybe more so you guys um would have to you know hold the D democratic party accountable because you know we all know that a lot of a lot of times democrats they want to put like a republican light candidate forward um and it not necessarily what the people want which would be you know somebody who's for america a radical like bernie uh, because that would actually like see progress see changes get made Instead, we get, you know, kind of like the old boys club where it's, you know, we'll we'll do a little bit to, you know, kind of make it look like we care. But we're also going to make sure that our pockets stay full and our business interests still have the opportunities that they have, um, even at the expense of, you know, Joe taxpayer and all the people with the, uh, you know, that have to work for a living and can't afford to take time off or go to a doctor and things like that. Um, so holding them accountable is one thing, you know, we're reviewing policies, discussing, you know, where things are falling short, where in trying to be, you know, fairly fair in the sense that, you know, when something goes right, ah, that went right. Cool. Um, when something goes wrong. Okay. Well, here's how it should be fixed. Um, we've spent a fair bit of time over the last couple of weeks talking about like the Gina Carano <laughs> garbage yeah. show that's gone on. Yeah, but yeah. Ten, Tanner and I both love the Mandalorians and uh, her role mm -hmm. in it. Well, I, I liked her character and, you know, I liked her in Deadpool. And, and now to see that she went from 
openly mocking uh, pronouns to I have spoken with Pedro Pascal and he's explained it to me and you know I will I won't be making fun of others for it um, you know I, I do understand it and I, I do see the value in it to you guys are canceling me therefore I'm going to become an even bigger shithead and I'm going to go over and hang out with Benny Shaps even though I could like bicep curl him Mm, I like that the, many ships. Okay. <laughs> You're welcome. One of the one of the worst mistakes I think the world ever made was letting Ben Shapiro think he's a real boy. I don't know. What, I just I, I don't get him. I and he's not stupid. The man graduated mm -hmm. from Harvard at like 17 or some shit, right? Yeah. I he, mean, he's and he I don't know. He was like the youngest, which this doesn't mean shit. But he's like the youngest writer, uh, not, I don't know, some shit, peace writer at a new magazine. I don't fucking know. I don't really. Fucking know. <laughs> yeah, it's. Privileged. Well, I, I watched, uh, this was a couple of years ago, and unfortunately, I made the mistake of watching some of, of his uh, things because I was trying to. <laughs> mistakenly like i knew he was not somebody worth listening to at the time uh, but and this is before like we inflicted jordan peterson onto the world and he really uh, became a thing um yeah, he's fun too oh that's that's a whole other embarrassing topic um and uh i made the mistake because the the guy that i was working with was like oh no I don't, I, you should check it out and i'm like i think he's full of shit but huh, huh, huh. uh made the mistake of looking up a couple of his things and um don't ever do that unless it, you're like putting it in incognito or uh, the same you're using the same browser that you only use at like 2 a.m. when you're looking at that porn that you don't tell anybody else you're into um, just to look for these videos because you don't you don't want those to affect your metrics and the ads that they start sending you because then you start okay. getting their books and it's just like I do not care I wish I could unsee this and then your YouTube uh, feed will all be suggestions of yeah, you know yeah, yeah. this person poning telebs omg stupid trans tar gets owned whatever and it's like do you guys like ever have any like videos that are you know explaining this concept or that concept or you know listen to the uh, here's this argument and you know reasoned position on this thing no it's all about poning and you know the quick gotcha points and that's like, as smart as he is i think he knows that all he really needs to do is just try to throw out quick gotchas um and that's that's all it takes because that's that's all you know the modern conservative wants. And I mean, I can understand. You know, we live in a busy world. It's difficult to you know parse through everything. I mean, hell, even just being on the left side with all the infighting, there's so much to try catching up on, which it just it's so difficult to to really wrap your head around. So I understand the you know the desire to just go for a quick you know snappy point, gotcha, win, move on instead of like the nuanced conversation and drawing out and actually looking into the issues, you know, with a humility enough to go, well, I don't really know. I don't think that one sentence is enough to sum it up, but what do I know? I'm just, you know, <laughs> I'm just a Canadian schmuck. You said it, not me. No, just kidding. Um, Lyman is, was here. I, well, wait, no, there he is. <laughs> here we go. Lyman. Oh, hey, God. welcome! Hey, look at you! What's going on? You look like shit, bro. True story. Show, show the shiner. I want to see it. Uh -huh. Oh, I hate to see the other guy. No, I. You know what? I wish I had a better story, but truth be told, I woke up with a migraine, oh. and <clears throat> you know, fought that through the day. Everything was pretty much good. I was coming downstairs a couple hours ago and I took like a couple steps out of the shower and I was like whoa and got really dizzy and just dude you're crackling like a motherfucker I don't know what's going on crackling yeah it's like interference or some shit going what? on I guess it's you it ain't me uh, I mean <laughs> un I mean unpossibly Maybe. Let's see. Uh, see, I told you. I, what did I tell you? I, Always with this fucking guy. I know. <laughs> I, I'm. I'm bad juju. 
<laughs> no, we were kind of. Uh, I wanted to get back to because he's a favorite subject of mine, Benny Shaps. Um, and that Benny whole, Shaps. And that whole. Okay, dude, you gotta do something, bro. That's just killing me. Is it through my mic? Yeah, I don't know. It's here. Mute it. Just mute it. All right, mute your in. One second. One second. Yeah, it's it's in. It's interesting. In. It's um, the mic. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. It's All right, right, I'll mute. You guys continue. I'll fix it. <laughs> uh, what was the point? What was the point? Okay. Anyway, so. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, Benny Shaps and that whole that whole cohort of, you know, want to be smart white guys who think they're like some sort of intellectual giants when they're just like they're a stupid people's idea of smart people basically is what they are basically yeah um yeah no you're not you're not wrong he's um and i think it's just because he he knows how to pander to his demographic i think that's probably his best skill is that he knows how to pander to his target audience and i mean we all know that you know his whole um rendition of uh cardi b's wop was really just more of a stunt because he was that... amazing is what it was like did you hear the remixes did uh, yeah I heard them. like which one oh. they all the <laughs> shit. yeah there was a couple. oh god they were absolutely amazing um but he he knows how to you know manipulate his audience he uses the right buzzwords and i mean that's that's the biggest thing that i think we're seeing out of a lot of conservatives i think he's a good representation of a modern conservative because there's very little intellectual integrity. And I mean, he was triggered by a fellow conservative, just grilling him on his POV. And all of that was just because he's not used to being on the defensive. He's used to getting to be the one on the offensive. He's used to being the one who's, you know, up at the podium and, you know, he's got his little list of questions that he can ask to try to, you know, wrap you up in your words. And because, you know, I think a lot more people on the left, um, have issues with you know things like public speaking and anxiety and things like that. I think he kind of takes advantage of that, which I think is pathetic to begin with. I, I think uh, deliberately trying to trip up your opponent simply so you can look like you're the big tough guy. It, I think that's absolutely spineless, cowardly, and uh, absolutely just disgusting. Uh, I think it's pathetic, and you know I have no problem thinking that because. I don't see any reason to suspect otherwise, you know, and, and I think that's the only thing that he really, he can use to make himself seem, you know, more imposing than he actually is. Cause if, yeah, uh, if you've checked out and I have not read the book, I have only listened to part of the behind the bastards where they were reading the book. Mm. Uh, he thinks a guy who is <laughs> six foot two and 220 pounds is a bear of a man. Um, I'm six foot two, 200 That's pounds, me. and I'm not a bear. Even when I was 220 and I I actually beefy, I was still not a bear. I still looked pretty lanky, you know? So it, he's very detached from, you know, humanity as it is. So that's why I say, you know, making him a real boy was a big mistake. Yeah, that that's great. Um, those snippets they read from that book are, they are just, uh, <laughs> they're, they're a joy. And pure, you can tell pure joy. You can tell that it's like a guilty pleasure and an exercise in masochism because he's just reading and he's going, this is so bad. It's so terrible. Yeah, it's just, I mean, it. it's not even the, the subject matter. I mean, the subject matter is horrible, right? It's just so bad. Oh, yeah. It's just the writing itself. How can you? I thought you were smart, bro. No. What are you doing over there, man? <laughs> Did it knock a concussion where you can't figure out how to do any shit with your mind? I, I, I changed everything it's supposed to be. Is it what? Like what's happening? Um, it could be in your settings. My yeah, I'm, I'm going through all the settings. Like I, I've toggled it between like whatever nonsense and uh, the snowball. Just use, just use your fucking regular. You know what? No, fuck it. Everyone's gonna get my gaming headset. Yeah, just use it. The... It's got like blue glowy shit on my fucking head. It's fine. it's all good. We're all going like that. Yeah, of course. All right, continue on. Yeah, uh, Benny Shaps is uh, 
Yeah. He's he's a literal but, piece of shit. He's not even a full turd log. He is just a nug of he, shit. He is the Death Valley of WAPs. One hundred percent. We're back. We're still gonna be here. Yeah, we're not going. Um, yeah, but he's not worth that much time. Uh, I just wanted to, you mentioned him. Yeah. It just made me think about because I watch this kind of shit for shits and giggles. I'm a hate watcher, so no. I watch um, Ruben, you know, and Peterson, oh. and of course Peterson just got out of a oh. coma. Oh, was uh, he? Dude, he was fucked up. He was high on Benny's Benzos. <gasps> His daughter took that. him to Russia, fucking put him in an induced coma. I didn't know about the coma. I knew his All daughter meat diet. I mean, yeah, that's. I'm. I'm. No wonder he's not healthy. I mean, his colon's probably backed up to the point where he's just gonna end up start shitting out his mouth, which I found out is a thing that can happen today. Okay, I don't. Yeah, I, let's go ahead and not talk. I think I'm good not, not hearing about that. And there goes Lyman. Um, <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, what do you, like, for example, let's do a, a typical night on the old cellar door skeptics, right? So uh, what is something, like, you just, I know that, uh, uh, what's his name? Hannah, fuck me. That was doing science stuff. Is yep. he still? Yeah, he's still doing the, the science oh, yeah. bit or whatever. Yeah, he he does more of the science stuff. I was I was really heartbroken to find out that he didn't do an episode that I was I had him completely in mind when it came to my uh, my Canadian segment. Yes, no. you're back. No, it's, you still suck, still... bro. What the fuck? Is it just the noise that's happening? It's yeah. it's like static. It's just static. happening. It could be that your connect. There's something wrong with the connection. It's gotta be like the it's like the be. wire, or there's some fray that's just kind of like. Meh. This has never uh, happened before. So I'm not surprised, actually. Um, <laughs> um so uh, Tanner, of course, does. I, admittedly, he does a lot of the the grunt work, the leg work, and everything. Um, with regards to the show, um, he does a lot of the talking, the introductions, and kind of, you know, trying to reel us in, which uh, if I get going um, or I get Hannah going can really derail an entire episode, <laughs> and I get, I get in trouble. <laughs> um, so we'll, it, it all depends on the stories that we're covering. We actually have started doing a segment called Questions from Conservatives, where um you know either we've from reddit or something that one of us found on facebook or something going on in the news um we'll take like a question that a conservative tries to ask of somebody on the, the left because they for some reason think liberals are all on the left and uh we we try to you know hash out you know our stances our own responses on those topics those questions to uh to, to sit and basically you know say well in because i know that usually these questions aren't asked in good faith or with enough of an opportunity to really explore and expand upon my response um i'm going to take that time now and you know if you actually be, have to have an answer well then you're going to have to sit and listen to the damn thing because you can't talk back because i'm not going to listen to you because you know I'm a, it's a recording that's how oh, that man, works <laughs> you sound like well, whatever I sound the crack like balls, right the, the crackling's gone that's all i give a fuck about but i am going to need you to look mr tech man look a little further into your settings and well, figure i'm going out to because this is the same <laughs> blue snow uh, black snowball and same the, it's the gotta exact... be a short it hey, sounds you know like what? a short Here, it's probably in the usb cable between the mic and the computer because the computer is clearly fine if i sound okay the mic on my headset is clearly not amazing because it's it, it cost me 23 dollars on a well, whatever the fuck sale and you know if you want to science it you guys can continue talking about uh how no bro things happen i can i can fully read no this. no it just be- shut up no we need first of all we need Lyman to finish the story with what about you following him fucking up your face? shit 
All right, yeah. cool. So long, no, not not even long. Sorry, uh, I got out of the shower. I'm like, oh, it's so warm and great. Like, and in here it's like 60, 60 degrees, sixty five degrees today for the first time in months. And so I got out of the shower. I was like, mm, let me get all. Dressed. Okay, I know. Uh, it, listen, listen. You want the story? You get the story. Okay. Um, I need all the extra. So, walk out of the room. Take a couple couple steps down the stairs and I'm like ooh <laughs> like things start going like ooh and all of a sudden like I'm like okay bah! hit the wall and I was like okay I'm awake now because the walls are hard that's cool and I was okay and this is not the first time this has happened because I have low blood pressure so there's mm. a thing called basal vago and oh, okay so if you go from ex- like extreme warm temperatures to cold, it can cause it. But if you like say lay down or stand up or sit down and stand up too quickly, your blood pools to your lower extremity. And it sounds worse than it is, but it's like enough to trigger your heart and your brain to basically go into overdrive and try to get your blood from your lower extremities more up to the upper extremities, uh, which makes sense to your heart and your brain. Um, mm. <clears throat> but during that time, you can just flat out pass out. It's not dangerous other than what you hit on the way down. And yeah. Well, I don't understand how you're so low to the ground. Why it's a why is it such a big deal for your blood to go up? I don't understand. Not there's nothing dude. there's Walls nothing are... operating up here anyway. So I don't know what's so that important. That is true, but at least I have the basic amounts to like I don't know see and my speech to kind of function. So you know we get what we get. Well, I'm gonna need a full on when that thing gets to its its uh, apex of awesomeness. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna need a, a pic. I'm sure you're gonna post it. That big old I pic. Mean, say, I, say don't, Nat- I don't. I won't kink shame. Yeah. Say, say Natalie. Y'all got rough or something. <laughs> Y'all got a little rough. <laughs> and now, if you know Natalie, you know, and they're never in a million years. Would you ever think? But it'd be funny. That's why it would be funny because it's you know. Anyway, so we're talking about um, your show or whatever, and the yeah. is the the science guy. He sure is. He, uh, he is in engineering. Um, yeah, that's right. He is like, a, so he's, he, he's kind of the right person to be doing a job like that because that's kind of what he does. And that's definitely his passion, but he's, he's still really, really uh, well read and well spoken as far as like philosophy goes. So he, he, op- he opaces uh, both of us when it comes to that, probably me more so than Tanner. Cause they've just read, mountains and mountains of that sort of thing and i'm just like there are times where i'm just like oh yeah well i can make a poop joke and that's about what canada contributes to the conversation because you know, there are times poop jokes, sometimes they're good sometimes they're called for sometimes they're necessity sometimes they're not he thanks and, for that brilliant piece of wisdom i appreciate it's that. not wrong I, I do agree. You, you know, there's a time and a place, and you know, sometimes you just have to accept that. There are children in this house. And, <laughs> oh, shut the fuck you know, up. Like, no, 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 no. I'm saying it, sometimes it's profound, sometimes it's garbage. Um, Again, more profound wisdom from Confucius over here. You are. <laughs> you are welcome. <laughs> Uh, I didn't want to say that I'm drinking Old Raspy. Uh, that's the beer for the night, the fancy beer. Lock your door. Remember nice. that, Lyman? Go ahead and take a look at the thing you stole from me. See that? Remember that? Let's see. see. Oh, yeah. You stole that. Oh, yeah. He stole that from me and um, we went to American Angels. Yeah, why don't you go ahead and tell that story? It's, now, our, it's our origin story. Well, it's, it's the just... origin story? It was just that uh, we were at American Atheist in Cincinnati and I met him and Adley and uh, I stuck oh. my beers in his ice bag. Well, it wasn't, it's when he was making his old fashions out of, it was like a portable old fashioned maker bag. 
It was like oh. MacGyver, MacGyver together. And uh, he he took one of my beers. Ooh, I don't it's know a what dick he's move. Doing. He's doing <laughs> sign language. You're muted. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> oh, I thought he was just you know taking or demonstrating what he learned from Marcel Marceau. It was. It was. A, it was. Uh, it was just a little mime show. Uh, so <clears throat> I had a, a laptop bag and. I, in the padded part, I had the ice. I got a bottle. Well, we, we walked down to the liquor store and got a bottle of bourbon and like bitters and all that other stuff. And I went to the front desk and I, of uh, Hilton and I was like, I need like 50 packets of sugar. And they were like, okay. I was like, okay. So they brought that to me and I was walking around making old fashions so everyone at the uh, convention could avoid paying the $17 per I drink. That, yeah. That's insanity. That yeah, he was just serving excessive. out of the bag. We were sitting in the bar area. He was just making them out of that bag the whole time. Yeah. Wow, that is incredible. That's pretty cool. Yeah, we got to hang out with all the cool kids. You know, um, he was a hit. He was a hit with cool kids. <laughs> For the you first know. time and last time. Oh, shut the fuck up. He hey, everybody gets one. Stars on. Okay, so what is, uh, so we got Hannah. He's a science yeah. guy, right? Yep. Yeah. Okay, so we got uh, Tanner. Now, I've never understood what his appeal is. Uh, I mean, um, he's, he's kind of a dumbass. No. <laughs> <laughs> Tell him I said that. Tell him the Red Wings still suck, too, by the way. That's so funny. They, I think he was excited to have a Canadian on because he thought, you know, there might be more hockey talk. And the problem with that is one i'm not a big sports watching fan i uh i would much rather play a sport than actually watch it i just maybe it's add maybe it's the fact that i just get bored because of all the damn commercials that happen every 30 seconds um but i just i don't really enjoy watching sports i have to actually be at the game to really enjoy it yeah, um yeah. uh but uh i'm right now uh i'm actually boycotting the flames because i'm really not impressed with the way they handled the uh the covid stay-at-home orders um so what had happened was when of course all the stay-at-home orders started you know sports teams they started canceling seasons whatever well the the stadiums and everything they have a lot of part-time employees uh who that's you know kind of a, a source of income for them well uh, the billionaires who ran the flame, run the flames said, well, if we're not getting paid, why should they get paid? And I'm just sitting there and I'm just like, uh huh. And then pretty much as soon as they said that Edmonton came out and was like, we're making sure that people at least get something. Um, we're going to, whatever, you know, the Corona, um, I think it's called CERB, uh, whatever that doesn't cover for their lost wages, we'll make up the rest. And, only after Calgary faced major backlash, especially in light of that, and Edmonton got a lot of applause from Calgarians for that, did the billionaires who own the Flames change their tune and say, okay, well, we'll do something. And it wasn't, uh, no, we were wrong. We shouldn't have had that stance. These are people who we rely on. And, you know, they put, come through for us and, you know, we let them down and we, we apologize. And we, it was just kind of a, okay, well, we'll do this. And just kind of, you know, cast aside you know tried to act like they didn't just try to screw all these people out out of money and turn their backs on them and i just for me that's that's something that i just i don't i don't particularly care for I, as far as i'm concerned sports make too much money as it is and uh yeah. while i understand that you know markets and, and all of that and i while i don't particularly care much for how free market is dictated by almost like by mob rule i also agree with the fact that people have a right to choose um and so that was uh, just something that I've decided is, you know, like I'm, I will not actively endorse the flames. Um, I just, I can't in good conscience. Like my, my boss is a diehard flames fan and uh, our CFO, he's a diehard Bruins fan. And so they've of course like to bicker every once in a while. And I'm like, yeah, that's nice. And then just to get back at my boss, I'll wear my uh, FC Bayern Jersey. Cause he hates them. Who? Uh, FC Bayern, uh, it's the oh, soccer team from Munich. Munich, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because he's a Dutch well, fan. München or whatever. München. München, the umlaut of the U. It's, it's, 
It, it's the uh, German word for monks, actually. How is it? Oh, I didn't know. Yeah. Okay. That's author. God damn it, he dropped out again. This fucking guy. Bye, friend. Yeah, fucking. Okay. <laughs> So yeah, uh, y'all talk uh, the science. Uh, yeah. I assume, and then the politics. I'm a, um, is politics a big part of the show? It's it's very much a huge part. I mean, we try mostly to uh, like talk about like policy and ramifications of various policies um, that go along with it. But uh, um, yeah, it's and then look into candidates. We actually had uh, oh God, I gotta pull up his name here. Uh, we had a Democratic candidate that we just randomly got in touch with over um a video of his that tanner had seen online um and it was his concession video and it was so well done and all of a sudden uh tanner's like i need to talk to this guy he's hilarious um and his name is liam omara um and we brought him on to kind of talk about his congressional run so i think he was running out oh he's running for democratic house candidate uh, he's a professor of history, um, and he was yeah he's he's in California I believe, yeah SoCal is where he says, um, and so we had him we've had him come on and all of that we we take a look at you know the platforms of you know the politicians when they're running things like that. Well, like I it's, think he's pretty fairly of progressive. Right? Uh, yes, yes he is. He was. Medif Medif uh, Medicare for all. I don't know what that acronym is. He's for UBI. Um, it, a lot of his platform is a lot of what we want to see out of left leaning politicians that we don't see because unfortunately years of quick populist thinking has led to this disdain and outright rejection of anything that seems like it might be socialist um, because okay. you know that's Wow, it's a reasonable they, position. They have really pumped that, and that shit just all the way back, man, mm -hmm. all the way back. After the oh, cold, yeah. I mean, when the Cold War, man, communist. I mean, the so uh, Soviet Union really stoked all that shit. You yeah. know, the McCarthy. And I mean, yeah, I mean, manipulation of you know narratives and and you know your population. It's it's not something that's new. I mean. This is something that really pissed me off when somebody said something stupid about, uh, you know, racists and Nazis and really was trying to downplay Nazis. So I, I commented, I was like, wow, people are really quick to defend Nazis here because there is actually a, an MMA fighter who had a, a swastika and not just, you know, like the Buddhist one that's, you know, the square, the one that's tilted 45 degrees. Uh, he had that tattoo and, you know, people were jumping to be like oh it's not a nazi blah 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 it's like well oh God, what do you call I... that like why would you need to have something like that on your body if you're not you know like that's I, that's it's... that's clearly just either you are just the dumbest troll um and uh well, so it was in, in the conversation it, you know he was trying to be like well no because you know the nazis their that ideology is long dead blah 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 i mean no uh, no it's not yeah. um and this whole this whole defense thing uh, or they, then they started going off about, um, you know, going after gen and gen committing genocide against the Jewish people. And it's like, well, you do realize that it didn't start with genocide. It started off with, you know, number one, they were playing off of the, uh, the millennia of anti-Semitic uh, theory and, and thought, you know, like there, everybody had something bad to say about the Jewish people that wasn't Jewish. Uh, and for millennia, people hated the Jewish people just because they could um and of course you know catholicism and and christianity really didn't help that because they blamed the jews for killing christ and so they kind of got to keep that alive and you know hitler got to rally the german people under this banner of you know these are the people who are the reason we lost the last war and that is why we got screwed over you know at this uh was at that... this treaty was was that, that supposed was a, to be some sort of German was, accent? Yes, that, okay. <laughs> it's, it's supposed to be a bad one, but yes, okay. um, you know, and it and it played off of the socially uh, pre uh, populist uh, whatever uh, anti-Semitic sentiments, it which led to you know this gradual dehumanization of the Jewish people, you know, to the points where in class they were actually seen as subhuman. You know, they were actually being taught that, no, they're not actually humans. They're separate from us. And 
it, it, the fact that people are so eager to forget that we don't jump to genocide. We don't just stay, go from, you know, day one, everything's fine to the next day. Nope. Everybody's in a camp. No, there are things that happen in, that build up to it. You know, these are not just an incident. They might, there might be a big incident that leads to it, but the big bad thing that happens doesn't just happen overnight. You know, there's, there's a long time, a lot of processes that go into making it happen, you know, and there's manipulation and there's crowd control and there's narrative control, you know, and, and that was, that was somebody like Hitler's strengths is that he knew how to really just take the narrative where he wanted it to go. I mean, at first anyways, by the end, he really had, wasn't doing very well with that. Um, but, uh, no, it was, and we're seeing that with a lot of modern conservatism is this whole trying to control the narrative and otherwise subtly and, and, you know, not, uh, holding things that count or holding accountable things. So we can kind of keep in control and, and, you know, we'll let people make mistakes as long as they make mistakes for us, you know, and that's, that's why I think they were so quick to let Trump get in charge. Well, one of the things like with Hitler in the beginning, he was totally, you know, respectively okay. But Germany was in tremendous amounts of suffering. You know, there were, mm -hmm. you know, economically, they were terrible. People were having trouble, like, keeping a roof over their head, eating, stuff mm -hmm. like that. So he came in, he did some stuff. Like, from, he promised to know. Yeah. Prior to all of the horrible shit, he actually did a good job pulling Germany out of some shit. Mm -hmm. like objectively it's true yeah but, yep. but well he was he was the man of the year with but time uh, well yeah but that's not what people think it is well no 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 well I'm, well no i'm just saying like timeline wise like that's that's how he got the foothold that, for the people to mm -hmm. buy into him is because they were they had a bad situation objectively he helped them at least perceptively to some people get them out of it. So they were like, yeah, you know, this is our guy. We're going to listen to this. And if you put it in a U.S. terms, like we didn't have that kind of situation. What we had from a like white supremacy, like exceptionalist standpoint, <clears throat> we had a black guy in power. And mm -hmm. so he came in. There are people that are like, oh, thank God the white guy's here. And they would just follow him to the end of the fucking earth. And they had more reason to follow Hitler at the time, pre genocide and all that stuff, um, you know, because they were objectively suffering. Um, mm -hmm. But the perceived pulling out of suffering and out of woes and prosperity is again perceived mm -hmm. is what lays the groundwork for people who are objectively bad to do bad things i mean it could be if you reduce it down to like a cult leader or something like that you have somebody who's alone like feels alone whatever it is whatever their woe is this person feeds the need brings them in, makes them feel included, makes them feel powerful, whatever it is that they're needing. And then they're like, oh, well, okay, well, I don't get that elsewhere. So here we go. Yeah. And then they can feed in, you know, what, you know, the QAnon stuff, the mm. everything else. I mean, it, 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 it's basically a formula at this point, like mm -hmm. think of, and not to down people who have found sobriety or anything like that and ultimately found um, you know, it's okay. You can I'm, say I'm, I'm, I'm working hard not to like down anybody's like progress. Cause I mean, from the standpoint of like somebody who's done a boatload of drugs, had a sobriety issue and found, you know, um, born again is, mm -hmm. is the term I guess I'll use. Um, you know, they're in a place that is desperate. They're in a place that is suffering and, and they have problems and they find someone, something, some entity organization that kind of helps them through that. But also there's like the side deal, mm -hmm. you know, the, the side message, which is why you see a lot of people that have been uh, recovering addicts, at least I've seen a lot of them. And I think on paper, I know on paper, I've seen a lot of them. You see people that have uh, histories of 
substance abuse and stuff like that, finding their way out, thankfully. Um, but then there's, because the organizations, the people that help them out of whatever their problem is, um, ultimately lead them to Christianity, evangelicalism, stuff like that. That's that's kind of how Hitler came to be. That's how Trump came to be in perception. Yeah, it, that it very much reminds me of um, the, the quote of Alfred's from uh, The Dark Knight, where he says, they turned to a man that they didn't fully understand in their desperation. Um, I love that new acting, right? Didn't understand. That's like my that's my favorite. Ah, there we go. Uh, you squeeze them, you hammer them to a point of desperation, and in their desperation, they turn to a man they didn't fully understand. And I've actually, I've, I've always like just held on to that because that's just it's so true. I mean, a lot of people in their desperation, and it's why they turn to somebody who you know they don't necessarily understand how they're operating because that's somebody who's coming at things from a completely different angle that they have no way of conceptualizing uh and that's that's why i have such a loathsome outlook on like the conservative party that we have in my province um so for those who don't really know a lot about canada we you guys have states we have provinces um you have like governors we have premiers is our, our our state leader essentially he's the guy who's the head of our province um we had four years of the left party act that actually took power because our right-wing party had fractured it had fallen due to infighting and it, they were divided into uh you know progressive conservative and uber conservatives and they were constantly fighting which is something that we see a lot among the left is you know we see a lot of people um you know like it's uh, I think it's, while I see it as one of our strengths, I think it's also one of our biggest weaknesses is, you know, we're constantly trying to prove each other wrong, which again, it, in this strength situation, it's because it's holding us accountable. That's making sure that we're staying true to our principles that we're trying to approach things right. But at the same time, that also kind of helps keeps us divided and why I think that, you know, we can't really get a stranglehold on the narrative the same way that we see it out of the right, because they come out and, they know that they've got a couple of words that are ingrained into people and they're so emotionally charged that they can actually cause a visceral uh, physiological response. You know, like um, our premier, Jason Kenney, uh, I was watching an interview and somebody brought up UBI and all he did was laugh it off, say, yeah, I've heard some talk about that, but it just sounds like some socialist dogma, blah, 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 blah carried on. And that was all he needed to dismiss it. So now anytime anybody who listens to that interview and supports him goes, if they hear UBI, they're going to write it off because, oh, that's just so much propaganda. So no, no, not really. It's, it's a well-thought-out position that you should not be a slave for your boss and your boss should not be allowed to take advantage of you because you need a paycheck, you know? I mean, ultimately, with automation and AI... Um, we are going to factually see, um, you know, things like truck driving, like the big rigs and stuff like that become mm -hmm. automated, uh, within the next nine years now, from the last estimate, uh, we're going to, uh, between last year and 2030, we're going to see about 3 million jobs in the United States. Well, not, not like change, not shift fully disappear between um, customer service. Like, you know, you call up and you're like, hey, I need whatever. Like, all that's going to go away. That's uh, him. <laughs> right? That's and, Keith. <laughs> but I mean, that, that's like, that's just the truth. Like, between that, the, the, the biggest two industries in the United States is customer service yeah. and trucking. And so, Trucking? How do you think about that? Yeah, those two are going to see right around, give or take, a 3 million job position hit. Not like layoff, not, you know, overshifting to this. You can get hired into something else. It's going to go away uh, mm -hmm. based on the projections from, like, people way smarter than I will ever be. And the people designing all of this uh, AI, all these economists and stuff like that. And, and the reason is, is because... Like, you know, if I call Verizon or Bank of America or whoever it is, it's like my general questions are pretty formulaic. And the, you know, with the AI involved, you're going to see, 
I mean, we can already do full sentence recognition when you call a phone number with some of these phone numbers. We're seeing this more and more often. That's going to go away. They're going to be able to route you to whatever you need, give like this general information. It's going to sound like a person. It's going to act like a person. You're never going to know the difference. Um, so, I mean, that's going to be a thing because ultimately AI and, you know, automated things don't need lunch breaks. They don't need sick days. They don't need all of this stuff. So from a capitalist standpoint, it is a, it is a windfall from the trucking standpoint. I mean, we saw the integration of it come from, you know, driverless cars initially with some of the test stuff. I don't know what they had in, in Canada, but here they had some of the Google, Google cars that had a couple problems, literally a couple. And they went away. Yeah. You have driverless Ubers, you have driverless, all kinds of different things. Now you see production cars with driverless. And the things I've been testing for the last like four plus years is big rigs, things like that, that are going to cause a situation where you don't need somebody on the road. It doesn't need to sleep. It doesn't yeah. need anything other than load in, load off for now. Um, mm -hmm. So UBI is not some like socialist, communist, Marxist, whatever ist you want to throw at it. If you're some degenerate on the internet, like term, it's, it's going to be the future and it's not going to be an ideology. It's going to be a necessity because mm -hmm. when you, this will be the first time ever where you see like advances in industry completely remove the need for positions, not just like, you know, the printing press was invented. So you no longer need this or like the internet was invented. So you no longer need this or, you know, cars were invented. So you no longer need like fucking buggy drivers or whatever it is. It's like, <laughs> it's not a shift of industry. It is a negation of industries based on absolutely computers. It, it is 100% a fact. It's not going to, I mean, from America's standpoint, we're not going to see anybody address it in a real fashion until everyone's fucking drowning. Because that's how we do. That's what we always, yeah, we always wait yeah. to the last fucking Like, we, we can't even agree that everyone needs to go to the fucking doctor. Like, <laughs> it's fucking absurd, right? Literally I, every country in the Western world and some that aren't in the Western world fucking have universal health care. In the fucking first world, like... France has had it since the 40s. Like, Russia has it. Like, Cuba, all these places that were like, oh, socialist, meh. Like, <laughs> we do all this shit. Like, they, they have their problems, no doubt. Like, who doesn't? But at the end of the day, Billy gets a toothache. Billy goes to the dentist. Like, oh, yeah, we know. Susie gets appendicitis or gets some fucking problem. They go to the doctor. And... I don't know. I will avoid going on a complete tirade, but it's at the end of the day, like all these countries that you see people quoting and like using as like these examples of how bad socialized medicine is. It's, it's fucked up because they didn't, they weren't originally that fucked up in the last like 30 to 40 years. Have they only become that fucked up because we have funded right wing militias all these interest groups that are inside of those places. We funded assassinations inside of the fucking first democratically elected uh, leader in Africa. Like, we not have allowed to play. No, yeah. Yeah. I live in the on the assassination. Yeah, assassination. <laughs> but it's like, at the end of the day, like UBI, like, I don't necessarily love Andrew Yang. Like, you know who Andrew Yang is? Yeah. I, yeah, yeah. I don't like him, like, from a general political idea, but he's saying certain things that are that are worth, like, considering in a broad spectrum. Like, UBI was one thing he was talking about. Mm -hmm. Like, these are four thoughts that we can see coming. We can see the writing on the wall. Just like you can see that everyone gets sick and dies, but, you know, no one cares. Um, it's going to become a reality in less than a decade, give or take. It's going to have to. It, um, just uh, this yeah. is a thought here. Um, I do have Utopia for Realists by uh, Rutger Bregman. Um, Bregman talks a fair bit about UD, UBI, actually. 
he hilariously enough what uh he went to was it uh davos the uh, billionaires convention no oh, yeah uh, you know, the, the billionaire circle jerk where they all pat themselves on the back for being so oh, forward thinking and everything. Minute. He's the, the sh- one who went there, called them out and said, you guys are the problem. If you guys actually paid what you owed in taxes, the world would be a much better place. But you refuse to. You're the problem. Um, and then Tucker Carlson tried to bring him yeah, on yes, and was yeah, started yeah, yeah. off kissing his ass and being like, oh, my God, you really told those billionaires. That was funny. Oh, that was and then so great. Rucker yeah, yeah. goes. Well, yeah, but I mean, you're Fox, you're, you work for Fox News, which is funded by the Cato Institute, which is billionaires. So you're a millionaire who's being funded by these same billionaires. So you're in their same camp. And then, of course, because Carlson got called out, he flipped the switch, lost his shit, started insulting him and everything. And then conveniently, that episode never made it to air. Uh, but Bregman as smart as he is he actually yeah, recorded yeah. it and released yeah, it and said look yeah, this is I what remember, was I remember yeah, yeah, yeah. so yeah, th- yeah. this is the book that he he wrote um, yeah go watch that if you, it's on youtube oh it's, it's, it's absolutely hilarious i can't recommend it enough it's funnier than hell because Bre- uh, oh yeah because carlson just goes from absolute tongue right up the guy's ass to ah oh, you're just another socialist commie blah 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 don't and keep shame, baby. Don't keep shame. You know, you don't no king shaming no king shaming it's, it's not king shaming. I understand. I'm, we all been there. But. I mean, in the in the in the micro, mm-hmm. I'm waiting for all the conservatives and everything else, all the MAGA idiots, to send back their fourteen hundred dollar checks that are coming <laughs> that just passed uh, today. The, well, it passed the House, then back to the Senate, then back to the House, and I, I think Biden is going to send, like, sign it on Friday, is what mm-hmm. I heard. If something's changed, I don't know. That's the last I heard. So basically, anybody, I believe it's under seventy five thousand dollars a year or ninety yeah, thousand dollars a year, seventy five, is going to get, uh, like, a, an individual person. Mm-hmm. You know, not including kids or this or that. Kids? If you got kids, man, you making some bank. Well, I mean, kids are fucking expensive, man. Yeah, I'm not. <laughs> <they're> fucking... <laughs> I'm not saying, you know. I'm just saying they, you know, that's yeah, they get I mean, some money. You're not wrong, but like at the end of the day, like these fucking people, not a single Republican in the United States voted in favor for it anywhere. Um, so. Okay, no. these checks go out. Are they? What are they going to do with this fourteen hundred dollars? Are you going to be like, oh, socialism, and like send it back? Like, no. are they going to donate it to like? Well, how much did Trump give out? Here? Like, he gave Trump six hundred dollars. He got six hundred, but then there was another an one. No, it was six hundred for an individual, and they never sent another one out because they were too busy uh, jerking each other off for like border Canada walls. Canada gets one every month if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, we we've, we've had a, it's been uh it was roped into our unemployment uh program that we have, I believe. Um and yeah, it's we did have something and yeah, there is a monthly that goes out um which has been fantastic. The problem is that of course conservatives are all rallying Oh, we're we're good. we're increasing the deficit. Yeah, exactly, just like that. A whole lot of that. Um, it's always the deficit. We're, we're, when we're some increasing. Shit they don't want. We're increasing the deficit. Oh, oh, military. Oh, yeah. Well, here's, it's, well, it's, well, it's, well, here's like what what's the biggest expenditure for you guys? Maple syrup. Um. <laughs> no, no, that's hey, a profit. no. Wait a minute. Maple yeah, syrup ain't no goddamn joke, sir. Oh, they no, have a strategic reserve of maple it is syrup. Huge. It's delicious. Um, <laughs> I, I, I want to say um, conservative politicians because uh, our premier misplaced almost two billion dollars Canadian. Now I know that's only like I don't know forty three bucks American, but still, you know that's two billion dollars out of our working budget. Well, I'm not okay. very good at the conversion rate. So, <laughs> I never know what it's at. Let me, um, let, me, let me rephrase the question. So, as a country, what right. is the the thing that you guys spend the most on that is i guess a that you spend the most on b the thing you spend the most on that's controversial the country Ooh, or the people in the country you talking about the, as a the country like can okay okay um health uh all right so I, 
well, I was waiting for you to work question there. I did pull up one thing. Um, so the largest expenditure at 32.7% is health, at least See, according well, to stats. Can I, from I just want to, I just want to stop for a second. I want to stop for one motherfucking cocksucking second. Do you know what that number is here with the military, sir? Hold on. It's, well, it's, how much is that for you guys? Just like in the public, um, like your, as a I'm whole. just trying to look. Oh, um, let's see. I'm just trying to find the, the amounts. They're not giving me much amounts. The for per capita, it's looking like um, is anywhere between 4,600 and 6,400, depending person. on which province. Yeah, the per capita. So, so to give you – now, Chris might have some other information, but I can tell you this much. Um, what Okay, we have what's called a black budget, which nobody knows what the fuck it is, and oh, that's mm -hmm. spent on bullshit at the Pentagon. Mm -hmm. which the Pentagon is what is like – if you can imagine a giant umbrella and the, the little stem that comes down the middle is our military and, the, and like the handle is like all the for-profit companies, that's basically how it works. We – what mm -hmm. we know for fact we spend a year is a trillion dollars a year on our pentagon slash military funding a billion that's what we're allowed to know the black budget mm -hmm. exceeds that and we don't yeah. know how much um that's ridiculous the average person like me chris if you were here god forbid my condolences um is $5,500 a year per person out of 300 plus million people worth of expenditures, not from the government, just as people. Like we spend a trip, we have, what is it? Nine, 11 super carriers across, across the world that costs like something like $1.45 million an hour to sustain. Ugh. Just like, Oh, like it it's 11 i know this for a fact like we have 11 these big like aircraft carriers right they're not carriers they're like super carriers they've got big Macs on them they've got all that stuff and so we go out <laughs> there we have them parked all around the world and they cost 1.45 million dollars u.s dollars per hour yeah not canadian so, dollars yeah real money like 3.5 billion dollars an hour <laughs> we don't have that kind of money um but so if you that's that's roughly like almost 15 million dollars an hour just on those vessels existing in operation that's not including the salaries that's nothing that's just to sustain those we have around 460,000 people a year that go bankrupt from they were perfectly fine Doing okay, at least. Yeah. Bankrupt. 460,000 people a year that go bankrupt from health care bills. Oh, yeah. We have forty to 50,000 a year that go dead from <laughs> lack of health care. Like, it's unimaginable. And there's people that are like, you know, we should have universal health care. And it, there's all these different terms. It's like universal health care, socialized health care, like blah, blah, blah single pair, all this stuff. No one gives a fuck. Like our, our conservative side looks at it like, because most of our conservative people get money from banks. Okay. So I want to go ahead and do it. I got like comparative military spending and this is just fucking obscene. Oh, it is. $732 billion is got what we spend. Boy. We are more, and I'm sure everybody knew this already. We're more than like the 10 next countries combined. Canada is in the, it's like 32 and they're bitching. Mm -hmm. The conservatives are bitching about it being too low and that's 20 mm -hmm. billion. They want to up it. Looks like Trudeau is going to up it up to 33 billion, but God damn. To be super yeah. clear on what Chris is saying, the United States on their military, which is public, the, the amount of money we spend publicly, not the black budget yep. is more last i heard it was in between nine and ten uh, more than nine and ten 
nine to ten uh, of the next country. We are number one in military spending. You spend more than the next nine countries combined. Uh, nine countries. Correct. Combined. We, yeah, we it's amazing. Like, and China and is included in that, by the way. Yeah. And, I mean, to be fair, like, if you look, I, I forget all the general statistics, but it's like, if you look at what China has and all the next biggest people have, it, it's like with those super carriers I'm talking about, like mm -hmm. they have one or two, like the next country down, I forget which one it is. It has like, one, has two super carriers. Yeah. We have 11. Like we don't Cause America, fuck yeah. Like honestly, like it's a mistake that I was born here. Like in my opinion, it's <laughs> bad. Like, like if I was given the opportunity to be like, "Hey, move your loved ones and your family to literally like Canada, France, like the UK, anywhere in the fucking UK," I would do it in a heartbeat. Cause yeah, I I don't know. Canada is okay. I want to go back to Germany though. I Man, Germany. at least they Germany can, like, would be if, fun. If I get a sinus infection, it doesn't cost me two hundred dollars. Yeah, yeah. Dude, you're dumbass, fucking. I am a dumbass, and there's no disputing that. But like, a hundred and like a hundred to like a hundred and fifty dollars to go have a doctor be like, "Yeah, well, sinus infection," and then you go to the fucking Walgreens, and they're like, "Oh yeah, well, you know." There's like I know it was like thirty dollars like a minute ago, but it's like now a hundred and ninety dollars for your fucking like and that's not exaggeration. I paid I've paid over two hundred dollars for fucking antibiotics. Yeah. Because like, you said you're an American, you dumbass. Well, it's a given. Like the it's <laughs> It's it's kind of amazing. Like I know I've I've been fortunate enough to not really have a lot of health issues. Um uh, yes. just as a, an aside. So my, my wife is Filipino and two months after we got married, uh, I went with her to visit her family in the Philippines and her, you know, she had family that had to go to the hospital. Now they actually under Duterte who hates Trump and the world kind of isn't for him because he's, he's kind of crazy and he's done some stuff. That's not really there. Because that crazy dude is yeah. Dylan Bauer. Duterte but fucking, yeah, Duterte, yeah. but Duterte he's he's done more to clean that up than a lot of people know. Because, of course, a lot of us look out and all we see is his extremist shit. And, I mean, don't get me wrong. Not a big fan of his. I don't particularly care for the, the, uh, the means because, yeah, the ends are great. But they don't necessarily justify the means because they've kind of enabled a little bit more of a... Um, dictatorial police force in terms of how they handle their crime. So it's a little more punitive um, because they're really trying to clean up the streets. And, you know, of course that's not the, the way to go about it as we know, but he has done some to clean that up and um, even improving their healthcare system. Now, when we were there, it hadn't quite been improved. Um, I think, I think it's actually now uh, federally run um, and is doing better than the American one, or at least in terms of that. But um, when we were there, uh, my wife went, of course, with the family to to the doctors. And she, I, you know, of course, I'm like, can I go with you? Like, do you need me to be there to support? And she looks at me, she goes, if you're there, they're going to know or they're going to assume we have money and they're going to charge us more. And of course, my privileged ass coming from Canada, I'm just like, wait, they'll do that? So, and I mean, I know. Let me make sure I understand. So your wife <laughs> yep. has to go to the doctor. Right. Normal it, it was it was it was her parents to the doctors in the Philippines when we were there. Okay. Um, so and yeah. Like, hey, I'm gonna be a supportive spouse. Cool. Yeah. And she's like, no, please don't, because if you show up, they're gonna think we have mm -hmm. money. A, yeah. They, and they will bill. Uh, they would build us out of our ass because they see the white guy. They assume mm. that you know. And I mean relatively speaking like the, the kind of funny thing is the, i mean in terms of yeah it was it was an interesting uh perspective because like where their families at over there um in terms of like class is basically like where i am for class here but if you take a look at an objective look at that we're like basically on par with you know their the upper parts of their middle class because of what we have access to, like our quality of life. 
Um, but that's a little bit off the, the, the train track that I was trying to take that thought process through. Um, so that was kind of what I saw over there. And then of course here, like in Canada, I can go to the doctors. I don't pay shit. Um, the, oh, the biggest, the biggest issue with our healthcare system. And I mean, I know preventative medicine is something that we have in spades and, you know, it's, it's not something we need to turn our noses up because we're very fortunate. We're very privileged, but it's still very lacking in terms of like, uh, Medicare, which was a, a, a big issue that our, our left leaning parties were trying to push, um, is, you know, pharmacare for all to make sure that people have access to medicine, because unfortunately without private insurance, there are some people who cannot get the medicine they need uh, hmm. and they still need to try to either have private insurance through their own means or through their jobs. Um, my job, I've actually got my medications all covered. So while, yeah, they would cost me, you know, like two or 300 a month. And I could afford that if I had to, because I don't do too bad in terms of pay. That still is less bills that I have to pay. That's more that I can save you know, or more that I can put towards other measures, right? Sure. Um, my dentistry is finally covered and I can go back and do all that. So preventative medicine is the part of the reason why we don't go bankrupt for medical bills. Whereas in the States, we see a lot of that happening. Like, uh, isn't that the number one reason people go bankrupt in the States is yep. medical bills, yep. Yep. medical yep. debt? Yep. Yeah. I mean, go look at GoFundMes. So oh. see how many of them are fucking for yeah. medical expenses. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Chris's point there, like literally, I think it was yesterday or the day before or somewhere in between in the wee hours, I saw a GoFundMe for a seven year old little girl trying to raise money to have some sort of surgery or something like we're not talking about like, oh, like, I don't know what the perception is outside of the US, but it's like, there are people that literally try to fund like, oh, well, I have a cyst like an ovarian cyst yeah. and I need to have it looked at and go have it removed. And like, here's a great example. I have a friend, personal friend I've known for a long time. Um, she had some ovarian cyst issues and yeah. they were going to do not, not uh, a hysterectomy, but some other, some other surgery, and some other ectomy, were, some other ectomy. Yes. Um, and in the States, like her parent, like to be clear, she would easily at the time be considered upper middle, like yeah, living in a, in a very nice area, like in any other circumstance, be perfectly great. Yeah. So they quoted her 80 some thousand dollars, like for, for the, with <sighs> like, because the insurance is like, well, you know, it's not a problem. It's not life threatening, but you know, it's not yet life threatening. Yeah. So, okay. Her dad was military too. And yeah. so they went to, oh God, what was it? Starts with uh, Malaysia. Mm -hmm. And they went to Malaysia with the flight there, staying oh. there for two weeks uh, yeah. and coming back. It cost them eight thousand dollars. <sighs> I've heard of this before. Yeah, it's medical room. tourism is what. It yeah, is. full room and board, transportation back and forth, and the surgery eight thousand dollars. And like, in the U.S., there's not with everybody, but generally speaking, there is this perception that, you know, if you go to another great example is Mexico. Like, if you go to Mexico or these other countries and you pay this money, you're going into like some chop shop, right? Like to get. Mm -hmm like some back room, like someone has you breathe some ominous gas and you wake up and your kidneys are gone. Right. <laughs> that's what, yeah. Like, that's what, that's what, I mean, the general perception of like the average yeah. American is that like, if you go to these other countries, like the only place that can possibly save your life or do anything of value is the place that charges you like as much as like four years worth of, you know, three times the amount of the average income for a single. Yeah. Um, like I'm originally from Arizona. I live in DC now. And so mm. Arizona, obviously very close to the Mexican border. Yeah. Um, there are, you can go online, you can call a phone number. They will send a shuttle to your home or wherever you want. They will pick you up, drive you across the border. They will do your dental work, like root canal, crowns, whatever you need done, done and Jesus. drive your ass back. 
for like, you know, if you need, let's say, a single root canal and crown, you need transportation there and back. Uh, it'll cost you like three or four hundred dollars. Just kill me, Jesus! You, you can't get a root canal no, in the United no. States from anybody who's like not super fucking scary. Yeah. For like under like a root canal itself is like eight hundred plus dollars, and we're and eight hundred is like if they're that's the cheapest part of it. The crown yeah. is what gets you. Yeah, the crown is like you know like. A thousand, if you're lucky. If you're unlucky, an average fifteen to three thousand. Like you can get all of this done. Yeah. With the shuttle service to Mexico, and it's like, and, and we're not talking about deep Mexico. We're talking about like 150, 300 yards over the border. Yeah. Um, it's a whole, it's a whole another world, man. Like, I mean, yeah. Like I was in a car accident. Not a, I mean, it was bad, like from my standpoint, but like as far as I can go, not nearly as what it could have been. Like, I I had hurt three discs on my back. I went to like physical therapy, like all these pain managers and doctors and all this stuff. What are you doing? Dude, I I was sitting at a stoplight Mm -hmm. and I got rear ended by somebody on their phone. Oh, and dude, I racked up $70,000. In, in, huh. in their, like, and I had somebody suing them, like the insurance company. I had my uh, an attorney suing the insurance company, and then the doctor I was going to wasn't was was not straight because he was like technically a family doctor, not licensed to be a payment uh, doctor prescribing all this shit. This is like before all the opiate stuff went down, so he was prescribing yeah. all this stuff. And I was like, yo, like, we should probably back this up. And he's like, nah, like, get the fuck out of my office. And he wrote a letter to my attorney. He's like, oh, he's pill seeking. I'm like, I'm ask- actually asking for less medication, to be honest with you. And so it, his practice went away. Like, but it all ended up where I would have been stuck with 70 grand if it weren't for the person that shared an office with this doctor that was like, holy shit, like, that's fucked up. And he wrote it all off. He was, I mean, he he was just like, you don't, you know, give me like eighty dollars and you're good, which gives you an idea what the markup is in the United States, you know, for office. Right. Well, yeah, I, I mean, I've seen that episode of Adam ruins everything, um, yeah. but but actually, um, that that was kind of where I first realized just how much the whole private insurance industry has ruined yeah. things because it's deliberate inflation simply because insurance companies didn't want to pay, you know, a few bucks here and a few bucks there. No, they wanted to actually make some real dinero. And so everything's price got just jacked right the hell up. And that's like that. That's part of the problem. And we in Alberta um, are so once the conservatives regained power. The health minister that we have, his wife owns a private insurance company, and he's been deliberately sabotaging. And I hope, I hope somebody who supports him hears this and reports this to him, and that he tries to show up at my door. I really do because we've got cameras all around this house, and it would be broadcast all over the fucking internet. Because oh, he calm down, I, Keith, you're not here. The no, FBI no. won't literally show up at your door. Like no, a- no. Tyler Shandro, the health minister of Alberta for the United Conservative Party of Alberta, he showed up at a doctor's house at nine o'clock at night because this doctor shared a meme about him. And he he and his wife screamed at this doctor for sharing a meme. He doesn't like it when you share mean memes. And I'm going to request that you give me his full name after this. (laughs) Uh, he He can come to D.C. (laughs) <laughs> well, no, because he couldn't get away with it there because he could actually, you know, get in trouble because he doesn't have, you know, political suave there. He's got diplomatic community. Though. See? Yeah, I doubt that. Um, no, yeah, so he thing. that's 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 what our, our health minister did. And they're deliberately sabotaging health care and education for their private interests. Like they're actively trying to sabotage to endear us to private interests. How much does it cost you? Like, okay, you read, you, you know, you graduate high school, right? Yeah. If you want to, like, we're not talking about like top notch, top tier. Let's say you want to become, I don't know, a T 
teacher or a programmer, whatever, mm-hmm. something like normal, not mm-hmm. super specialized. Do you guys go in like sixty-five to a hundred thousand dollars in debt to go to college? Not yet. <laughs> It, it's it's about it d- depending on if you're working um your own means or whatever um you can go like i know i was at when all was said and done i was about fifteen thousand in debt after my degree shit that's but like that's fifteen thousand that's a semester in state. yeah yeah that's exactly the... exactly that and then, and that. yeah that's that uh, that didn't quite cover my books but so you're like 1550. <laughs> 15, 16,000, somewhere no, in there. Yeah. The I mean, are... and that's not including my own dumbass debt that I racked up I, because I'll of my own problems. Way, but... Like, I tried to go to ASU, Arizona State University, which is a state college. Like, to get in, you need like a 3.8, right? It's not, we're not talking yeah. Ivy League, folks. We are talking 3.8. They learn stuff and they teach stuff and you pay money. And, yeah. To get so the average, I looked it up a year and a half, two years ago. Yeah, because I've tried to go back to school twice, and that has mm-hmm. not worked out because people like crashed into like towers the first time, and then like dad died the second time. You know, it's like nothing, yes. so it's like whatever. Stop fucking around, people. Um, <laughs> Jesus, and so. <laughs> And so I Somebody flew into a building once. Yeah, yeah, stop fucking around. Stop fucking around. Like, <laughs> god damn. So, I think, no, I think it was two years ago. 2019, I looked up what the, what the cost, the average range to go to Arizona State University was. And on the low end, so this assumes that you have your bills paid for you, right? Like, you live in with parents. Like, you have no bills other than school. Yeah, it was almost nineteen thousand dollars a year. A, no, fuck no, D- dude. The average four-year degree in America costs sixty-five to seventy-five thousand dollars. Jesus Christ. And yeah. then, and, and then it was like, because it was like a thing that they have on their site to be like, how much should I borrow? And mm. and so if you have no bills paid for, you don't have like much of a job, like or anything else. They were recommending that you take out just under $28,000 a year to go to school. <sighs> so you could get a loan to go to a school that will get you a four-year degree that almost overwhelmingly will get you less than $55,000 a yeah, year. Yeah, you're not good. What's the point? What's the point? Yeah. And like I get the point big picture, like society wise, it's like you need teachers, you need like even scientists, like scientists mm-hmm. when they first get their four year or even their masters, it's like they're making like fifty to like sixty thousand dollars a year. They depend on grants a lot of times. Yeah. So once you get your PhD, then you can actually have your own labs and get funded and stuff like that. If you have sub PhD level then you generally, generally have to work for a lab or a project that has a PhD at the front. And they are the ones that get the funding. If you have less than a PhD in in like any of like, you know, physics, uh, biology, whatever it is, you're pretty much not going to get funding. You're going to basically be a lab rat or a glorified lab rat. And like, my significant other is a teacher mm-hmm. and uh, <clears throat> because she works for a private school and she's a head of school at a private school. She makes more, more for sure than any public school teacher would. Probably she's just unstable. A- she's unstable. <laughs> she will kill you. She will and, kill you. And by kill you, it's like, she's a, genuinely like one of the nicest people on the planet. Oh, it's gross. It oh, is. She is. <laughs> it's, it's not right. It's like so, I, just because this is something that I'm actually curious about, and I've never actually asked the two Americans that I talk to constantly. Do do your teachers like the in the public school? Do the, is there a union? Yeah. Okay, that about answers that one. Well, it depends on the state. It depends on uh, not only the state, but it depends on the district. Oh well, yeah, district. Well, so I'll give you my personal example. So her. 
school being private still yep. adheres to Washington DC public schools like general like hey is it a snow day is it this like they try to have some consistency right not just five hours right so DC public schools has a totally different idea about how COVID should go the Maryland like uh, Montgomery County public schools have a different schedule if you go back to Phoenix there's uh, about half a dozen eight different districts inside of that and uh, Phoenix Metro is basically like east to west 68 miles and north to south like 50 48 miles 50 miles like it's big and so <clears throat> yes the districts have unions the states sometimes have unions well, no, the That's... states can get rid of unions. Like here in Tennessee, I know they have made it where they don't have bargaining rights. Now you can have a what? union, but they What's can't. What's the point? I, I know, right? It's just fucking. It's toothless. So how does that work in, in, in there? Because I know during the Red for Ed, I don't know. Like I, I'm sure at least one of you remembers Red for Ed. Uh, <laughs> it was the teacher strike uh, three, four years ago. West three, Virginia so did ago. one. West Virginia was the one that got the whole thing started, if I'm not. Was it? <laughs> I don't yeah. remember. West Virginia did not fuck around. I remember this because they, they fucking, they really just pushed it hard. And this is what you have to do, which is interesting. West Virginia is like where the coal miners strike was back in the day, right? Back in yeah, the where, where the term originally the redneck, redneck which is yeah. funny because they seem to be so much against unions. They, you think maybe they'd be not, but anyway, uh, so, so, cause, um, so my wife is a teacher. So we have two parallel public boards and without going too deep in, into the, the, the fact mm. that there is two public boards, um, there's the public, typical public, and then there is the Catholic separate school district, which still abides by um, the main public um, edicts. Um, they just, they have their own, a couple of their own special interests. And, uh, but basically they both belong, or in order to work in as a teacher in either school district, you have to be a part of the teachers union of Alberta. Uh, the, as far as, yeah, for, for what I understand, the only teachers who don't, and if my wife overhears this, she'll like hit me with something when we're done recording. Cause she doesn't you know want to interrupt. Uh, she's polite that way. No, I want to see it. I want to, can we, maybe we can get on YouTube <laughs> and get some good YouTube. And I'll slow um, it down. Let's she, uh, no, cause no, cause she, she knows that it would, it you know could reflect poorly on her. Um, oh, her! Fuck it, you! It, you There's two yes, Americans here. We we put this on YouTube and make it go viral. We don't tell. Yeah, we're not <laughs> um, n n uh, anyways, they uh, that you have to belong to the Alberta Teachers Union. The only ones who don't, as far as I understand, are the ones who are like in the private education. So if you teach at a private school, you don't ha you're not covered and protected by the union. The only thing is that typically to entice teachers. They, you know, try to pay better, offer better benefits, those types of things. But I mean, um, actually, the funny thing is, is that even though we are in the, uh, the, the, the conservative heart of the country, my province, hilariously enough, has the highest paid teachers in the country. Um, How much do they make? Yeah. Uh, to start, they make about 60,000 Canada gooses a year. Holy shit. Canada, okay. huh? So, Canada okay. gooses. Well, how much is that in American, though? Uh, that's, I don't know, twenty three fifty. That's, that's not shit. That's not really much. That's like forty five fifty. That's not but, that much. But just wait till you hear the statistic. Like of the two places between Arizona's got the third worst, um, up from the second worst schools in the country out of fifty states, right. and they have the worst paid teachers in the country. A teacher who gets a four year degree. Uh, entry level in public school starts making under forty thousand dollars a year, right around thirty-eight. And then with a master's degree, 
depending on what your what grade level you're teaching and stuff like that, you can make upwards of right around fifty. And then, like my sixth grade teacher, I know this just because I actually had a reunion with her, weirdly enough, because she sought me out on the internet, which is her mistake. Um, <laughs> Two years, uh, three years ago, she, I asked her about it. I was like, you know, because I was telling her about, you know, all the red for red stuff, and she was like, yeah, I think it's great. Like, you know, we didn't have any unions and people doing stuff like that in uh, in the school district. Um, she said that when she had a master's degree teaching sixth grade, she made fifty four thousand dollars a year, um, and that was. Or four or something like that. God damn. And so I ain't yeah. got no better. It got no. worse. No, and what's interesting, in the in the US, some interesting statistics that are worth noting. Um, around thirty percent of teach public school teachers work at least one or more jobs in addition to teaching to pay their bills. Um, <clears throat> and they're I think it's like fifteen percent of the of the thirty or twelve percent of the thirty. Uh, have more than two jobs. Like they have their teaching job, they have a second job, and they have a third job or more. Jeez, that's, yeah, and because I keep seeing those stories about teachers who are getting fired for having an OnlyFans. Oh, and yeah. as far as I'm concerned, why are we more concerned that a teacher exercises bodily autonomy than we are with a teacher not being able no, to make any you're meat? talking about the home of abortion. But, so I yeah, mean, no kidding. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm uh, so I, I did find. So right, I did find the collective. Over in your communist corner. <laughs> yeah right. Um, so I did find because the union, of course, it's all public knowledge. They are because they are public. Uh, cons they are considered uh, public employees. Their salaries are posted. So um, the your salary as a teacher is actually dependent on your years of education. So. To start, if you only have your degree in education, you only have the four years of post-secondary education, your starting salary in Canada is 58933 Canadian a year, which, uh, according to today's metrics, uh, is about 46000 America bucks. Um, if you have five years or more, it's 62000 um, Canadian, which translates to, god damn it, stupid click and so copy teacher, paste, uh, to sixty. Live. they can't um if you're once you've been a teacher for 10 years uh if you if you have six years or more um you start off at sixty-six thousand canadian which is fifty-two thousand, fifty-three thousand american but after 10 years if you have six years of education under your belt so probably two degrees you're making just over a hundred thousand a year or eighty thousand american you know who, so you know who makes a hundred thousand dollars or more a year teaching here university professors some tenured university professors correct i knew yeah. people that were uh, uh, adjunct professors at like either a state college or a community college um, yeah that they don't make shit way below that there uh, that's, that's another thing adjunct professors are actually uh you know they're trying to get unionized because they get paid so little they have no rights they have no yeah you know. that's so, yeah how, how does canada look at unions as a whole um it depends on which type of canadian you're talking to because a lot of conservatives are obviously anti-union um there are uh, a lot of people on the left are very pro-union and i mean admittedly i'm pro-union i have issues with a lot of the ways unions are run but the problem that I'm the, the way I reconcile that is I, you know, the, it's a union and it lives in a, a so-called open markets or free market society and is, you know, succumbing to the natural forces that are involved in that. So, you know, we do see corruption in unions as you know, you guys do as well. We do see unions that kind of abuse their authority and, do put strangle holds or put unfair limits uh, all depending on what's going to benefit them the most um so that is that is my hang up with unions but all in all i am pro union uh, we actually have a labor union in alberta uh, i'm not 100 sure exactly what they do uh, 
but that's something that we've also got that kind of helps. I believe they help inform government policy for workers' rights. Um, what do you mean by inform? Like just um, I, yeah, I think so. Um, Unions here definitely do that too. Um, I would say whatever the ratio of, I don't know what the ratio is now, of Republican to Democrat here, um, pretty much I would say it's safe to say all of the Republicans think that unions are not just bad, like, oh, they're just not good. They think they are <clears throat> the foothold to becoming Nazi Germany because they don't understand history. Um, I mean, I say that almost jokingly. Yeah. Um, but like, well, Reagan, Reagan's the one that started that kind of whole. I mean, it was already a, starting to go down. But the the air uh, the um, uh, air controller strike that yeah. he basically broke when he came into office. That was a prelude to all the, all the whole union busting shit that's been going on for the last, what, 50 years? Yeah, I mean, that was definitely bad. But, I mean, not to go on, like, too big of a, a history trip, but it's like the advent of police in the United States was in Boston. I think it was 1863 or 1862. And the entire purpose of the police force was to, A, quiet down dissidents, mm -hmm. which meant unions. And uh, he was to suppress the uh, basically black people. Well, it's poor um, people and black people too. Yeah, to yeah, keep yeah. them away from the rich people. That's fair. Basically. Um, and, and to, you know, if somebody escaped from the South to go to the North in, in a friendly state, you know, or not friendly state, whatever, however they had it broken down, it's like, the cops like would you know arrest a black person uh yeah. find out essentially who their owners were say hey come get your black person and uh <clears throat> that was about it but yeah like we've been very anti-union um and progressively more so since the 1860s yeah um the which is just baffling to me because the idea that America peddles all the time is like blue collar, like, you know, the coal miners, the car manufacturers, like, you know, the whatever. Yeah. It's like even the NFL, like, which is fucking garbage and in and of itself, like it just peddles it as this thing where it's like, like almost like it's autonomous. Like it just does its own yeah. thing. Nothing matters, but collective bargaining, is the meat and potatoes of, of like a society well like, at that's least in the last like 300 years 200 300 years well and that's that's what i was um kind of what i danced around when i was talking about you know modern conservatism it's it's about controlling a narrative and you know you you already explained how uh the blue collar people are so anti-union is because the conservative sentiments is are able to say that, you know, your union, they want to take your power away from you. They want to make you weak. They want to take your strength. They want to take this and take that and take your hard earned dollars so they can sit in the office and they can be the ones to quote unquote bargain for you and, and pretend to look out for your best interests. And don't you think it's better if you can do it yourself? And they put That's forward that narrative because because you know what the, the blue collar sentiment is yeah i'm strong hard working it's it's um it, hannah kind of met, used the analogy and it's one of my favorite analogies is like boxer from animal farm it's you know i will work harder as the pigs are sending him off to the glue factory because he got hurt and you know that's what so many of the modern blue collar labor people uh, modern blue collar worker is is that they're just seen as chattel for uh, you know, some billionaire who, who needs to make money or who wants to keep lining their stockbroker's pockets, things like that, is that they're expendable and they just keep this narrative of, well, that takes away your power. If, if you unionize, it's your power you lose. What's interesting, Yitty. like my mother is a um, ICU nurse. She's been doing mm -hmm. it for almost a decade now, roughly, a couple years shy. Um, 
she worked for you know state hospitals. She worked for private hospitals. She worked for the Mayo Clinic uh, in mm-hmm. Arizona, and she ultimately started doing contract work, like where basically you get a six plus month uh, contract to go to a state and work. She ended up going to California a bunch of times. Long story short, they liked her. These people they kept like contracting her in California. She ended up staying. Well, now she's an employee in Northern California. And the same, I'm, when I say the same job, I mean the identical job. Uh, they get like three weeks off a year as opposed to these like six days in Arizona. Uh, they get a week off if someone in their family gets sick. So if they have to care for somebody, they get, uh, because they're unionized in California, um, yeah. they get, they can't work more than X amount of numbers a week and their shifts can't be more than 14 hours and they can't make them work 14 hours unless they agree to it. There's like a hierarchy like of seniority, whether or not they can be moved to other departments and stuff. So, cause she's been there a bit. Like if they're like, oh, we need somebody in X, Y, Z department, like she, because she's a senior nurse there, she's like, no, I'm not going to go. You, you need to grab somebody else. Like there's yeah. all these rights and like benefits that in Arizona it was like, oh, well, you get like five or six days sick, and uh, you know everything else, just go fuck yourself. Um, well, I know someone who drives or flies an hour. flies from Montana to work in California. Really? And they still make bank. Yeah. yeah. They fly from Montana. They live in Montana. They go to California. They're a nurse and they're there for a certain amount of time. Right. And then they'll come home. Like, I don't know how her schedule works or whatever. You mean like uh, per month or per week or whatever it is? Yeah. Like, but I mean, back and forth, not like a six month gap. Yeah. It's, but it's crazy to me that you can yeah. fly. <laughs> you have enough money to fly back and forth because you're making so much money that you can, and of course, obviously, the cost of living is a little lower in Montana. Of course, you know, in case you hadn't figured that out, you know. So, I mean, it's, it's, yeah, it's an interesting thing dy- seeing these different states, uh, the way they handle different things. Uh, yeah. and obviously California has its problems. Uh, we like know, anywhere. But, but I mean, you know, when it comes to nurses, it seems like they're doing pretty well by them. Dude, they're doing so well. Like to give you an idea, uh, I looked up a text she sent me a while back versus like semi recently Uh, Mm -hmm. in Arizona working as an ICU nurse, she was like making around like, and this is not bad money. It's respected. Mm -hmm. Uh, She was like hourly rate was right around like $34 an hour. Uh, And in California, she's making like without overtime, which anything over, I think 14 hours a day, which average, like it doesn't go per hours per week. It's like if you work more hours than the allotted amount in a day, like right. you get X amount of dollars and stuff like that. She's making like right around like sixty-seven dollars an hour, sixty-five dollars an hour. Yeah, yeah. And and I'm not like don't get me wrong, like these are obviously very like very educated, very it's a it's a metric fuck ton of hard work. Oh yeah. And, and so I get it, but the the fact that you can go from one state doing the identical job mm-hmm. and get shit on there to another state yeah. and actually be treated like a person that you can actually theoretically pay off your student loans. Um, it's kind of magnificent like to even think about. Yeah, like, it, it, it's, it's just baffling to me. It's like... Mm-hmm. I don't know, like everyone in America who doesn't think socialized healthcare or universal or whatever the fuck word you want to use for it, like apparently thinks we're all going to live forever and nobody gets sick with age and like, because it's like, well, I don't want to pay for you know, yeah, a smoker. Apparently. And it's like, 
you dumb bastard. <laughs> like, cool. Like, nobody wants to pay for a smoker because no one wants anybody to be a smoker. <sighs> but, like, whatever. It's like, you're the average person a year pays like five thousand and some dollars for the just to have an insurance policy. That's not to use it. That's to own a policy. The average amount that the United States yeah. government spends per capita is a right around ten thousand dollars, give or take. And it's like just having I don't think people understand how insurance works where it's like oh i work like i've worked for some big fucking companies like like multi-billion dollar some of the biggest companies on the planet and it's like they have their insurance plans cool everyone pays into it it's a pool and it's like the reason why it is what it is is because everybody chips into it so they kind of normalize the race between people and they use a pool at the insurance company to pay for the people that use it it's the fucking same thing as universal healthcare on a, on a very small, small scale. Like everyone pays their taxes. It's right. funded by that. Everyone pays. Yeah. Them, you know, yeah. It's it's that's, that's thing, pretty right? much all the things like health insurance are. It's just a capitalist portrayal of a socialist idea. Everybody pays. Uh, he's in. That. You only take out when you need it. Gentlemen, I'm gonna have to wrap things up. I think I'm getting oh old. God. Uh, before we go, give me one Canadian thing. I want the most Canadian thing you can think of, like a, an anecdote. <laughs> yeah, no, that's yeah. Wow, we've been here almost two hours. Holy shit! <laughs> I can think of one Canadian. Form. You're not Canadian. Shut the fuck up. I am up. not. I am not. But no, I'm asking him. Help. I know he's got something. The most Canadian thing. Um, it's it's probably gonna be like Alex Trebek eating poutine while riding a moose, and his pet beaver <laughs> sits on his shoulder. <laughs> 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 Oh, go sorry, my internet hard. apparently is starting to shit the bed yeah, a little bit. So if, if I cut out yeah. there, uh, I apologize. I, I thought I had pretty weird image. image. Okay. Everybody loves him. Yeah, it's weird. Al weird Al is definitely Canadian. Huh, I didn't know that. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I, I could pull up my Montreal Canadiens jersey oh, if you want. Oh, God. The Abbey Tone or whatever the fuck it is. What is it? The. Abby Tone, it's what they I call him. It's words. I'm an uneducated American. I need help. It's the, the they live there. I don't understand the the nickname. I don't. That's not a Quebecois. Right? Quebecois. Oh, it's Quebecois. Quebecois? Quebecois. Montreal Canadiens. It's it's the yeah. NHL team from Montreal. Yeah, it's but they call him the Abby Tone, which means they live there, which is a stupid nickname for your team. Oh look, I live in Montreal. I've never, I've never heard that term before. You never heard that. Cause you're no. not cool like me. That's what I'm not. I could have yeah. told you. Go that. look it up, fuck stick. I don't. You might know learn. All right, Keith. Uh, why don't you give everybody your? Um, <laughs> he's he's useless. So give every sure. your. Um... <laughs> so the 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 links that I have. Um, so we have our website, cellardoorskeptics.com. It's all one word: skeptics with a K. Cellar door, skeptics. Um, and then if you're more interested in me than the rest of us, because, uh, you know, I'm, I'm different. I'm, I'm not the same. Um, I tweet from at Buddy Lumberjack. Okay, also okay. all one word. Buddy uh, oh, that's where oh, I do most of, more of my activism and, and things along those lines. But uh, yeah, so that's, that's about where you can find me for the most part. Um, I don't really do a lot of like my own for my own personal like, social media is i just don't because i have conservative family members on there and they just get really just, yeah, it's it's Douchey. shitty and stress stressful in ways that nobody needs um so it's okay. again it's at buddy lumberjack on twitter and our website okay. is cellar door skeptics you can find it actually we also have uh, a twitter we're on spreaker we have our own facebook page uh, feel free to check us out uh if you want to listen to three white guys who sit and uh you know try to 
not be three white guys, but That's actually cool. people who are citizens of the world and, uh, you know, are a lot more aware of the impact that their actions have on things. And I want, before you go, there is a giveaway for every Canadian. I don't care how American they sound. Get them to say anything like about or anything like a boot. It's a, every time I'm telling you, man, it, without fail, if you <laughs> get them to say about a boot, it, a boot? It, it, it's just every time, a boot? every time. Good day, you hoser. <laughs> hoser, I like. I'm gonna hoser. tell you a boot, Canada. Eh? Yeah. No, uh, no, that a thing. I never. I don't even think I've ever, but you know, ever heard an actual Canadian say a. But it's supposed to be like their thing, or whatever. Yeah, I don't. Uh, yeah, that was one thing that I've talked about was uh, they're supposedly the Canadian accent, but it's I I, I couldn't figure it out. Uh, there was even no agreement online as to what the Canadian accent is. And part of the problem is, is that like the United States, we've got places that have their own accents and dialects. What? You're yeah. not one monolith. What? You, you, you want to find a real interesting Canadian uh, dialect, go to the Maritimes. Uh, so like Newfoundland, Nova Scotia, yeah. New Brunswick type area. Uh, yeah. Or Prince Edward Island. They have their own, own accent their own language basically so interesting, interesting. Where, two questions one where is the canadian version uh equivalent of the confederate states like the south where he is <laughs> alberta yeah 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 okay alberta they have they have street preachers and shit up there i mean well, it's, is that it's, is that not everywhere no, that it's apparently from when I hear Calgary is pretty, pretty bad. Well, yeah, because Jasmine actually lives in in Calgary. Yeah, she's Pixie, always tweeting yeah, she's about always, random shit she sees. Yeah, she's and always telling stories about the, that stuff. Aside from Weird Al and uh, Buddy Lumberjack, this fine gentleman at Buddy Lumberjack, um, one of the other treasures to come out of Canada is uh, the creator of Ren and Stimpy. Is that so? Yeah. Like the the whole Ren and Stimpy soundtrack, which is in, incredibly hard to find. They have the songs like the Royal Canadian Kilted Yaxman. Like all <laughs> these Canada slights, like where he makes fun of Canada. Huh. Oh, um Michael John Crick Falusi? Chris Falusky? Chris Falusi. I can't remember all oh, my phone's dead. Right. Um uh, what he said. Uh, sure. I don't think that, Illustrator. I don't think... Oh, and he's best known for creating Ren and Stimpy. What's his last name? Uh, Some French. Chris. Chris Falusi. C. Uh, K. R. I. C. F. A. L. U. S. I. That doesn't sound. That's right. Ukrainian or some shit. He's Quebecois. Those are fun guys. They're assholes for when I hear. French people are assholes anyway. You know what? I will say this. I went to France for 11 days and I only had one person, which was probably like a 15 to 17 year old girl at a coffee house, be rude to me. Hmm. And so, well, I can tell you right now, like, even Michael in our group chat will tell you that uh, Quebecois is different than France. Oh, Oh, I know. It is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, your attitude. They, like, he hates Quebecois people. Mm-hmm. And like, I don't know, my experience in directly as an American in France who claimed Canada at the time because we were at war and we were very unpopular under George Bush. Um, <laughs> so, so they're like, where are you from? Are you from the U.S.? I'm like, not Canada. <laughs> um, yeah, a lot of people did that. Yeah. Say it's about, not- motherfucker. <laughs> Say it. A boot, a boot, a boot. <laughs> Uh, just sound. Just talk like you're from Minnesota. Oh God, no. well, that's, that's, that's kind. Of, that's that's kind of, like the history of it is kind of why. Um, that's why they. That's why they talk like that. Like okay, we hear it a mile away. We hear it a mile away. Yeah, and we do. But that's because we barely speak English to begin with. <laughs> speak for yourself. I have the 
southern accent is nothing but the the height of gentility and knowledge sir genteel yeah very very genteel can't you tell all right keith thanks for coming on um, thank I you wanna, so much for having me i'll let you uh get back to important things like kittens and and why poutine and, and poutine poutine and yeah healthcare fucking asshole go fuck you and your healthcare <laughs> son of a bitch anyway love uh, you <laughs> hugs and kisses gentlemen all right take it easy man you guys too thank you so much take it easy man and lyman you got anything you want to say uh my face hurts all right well you know what i'm gonna say until next time Y'all take it easy now. Actually, take Lyman to take it easy and not fall down any stairs. Y'all take it easy now, okay?